Welcome to a new way to museum. It's good to see you all back. I'm Dr. Reese Barrick, and I'm here in our traveling summer exhibit, Sahara Sea Monsters. What's really cool about Sahara Sea Monsters is there's about seven exhibits in one here, and they cover some really cool topics. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to talk about, you know, a real whale of a tail today. So we're going to cover whales and a little bit about the cool evolution of whales and things that were found in Morocco and in Africa. So whales have a really sort of long, fascinating history. Um, as many of you may know, or maybe not, whales are actually related to ar their artiodactyls. So they're sort of more related to even-toed um, animals like hippopotamuses or cows. So the very earliest whales didn't live in the ocean. They were running around on land. They were kind of wolf sized They're about, you know, six feet long. Um, and they were running around on land, but they could definitely go diving into the water, maybe catch a little bit of food. The first one, Pachycetus, was actually found in what is now Pakistan, as you might guess from the name. But in that part of the world is where whale evolution really started with the first whales. Um, and that was about 48 million years ago. Uh, and they, they ran around in different places. Ambulocetus was the sort of the second known whale at about 47 million years ago. And it was bigger, it's maybe 14 to 16 feet long. Had a, had a large head and a little bit more of a croc-like uh, lifestyle where it was still mostly in fresh uh, estuarine waters and could still come out on land. Um, you get to go to 46 million years ago. We had a uh, whale called Myocetus, which is kind of an interesting one. And Myocetus was fascinating because it didn't have a tail. So it may have actually been a little bit more like a sea lion in how it would swim around. Um, but then we are, the animals that were becoming whales, or really are whales, started moving around uh, what was the Tethys Seaway, but they sort of moved around on land and got into shallow coastal waters. And by the time we get to 41 million years ago, maybe all the way down to 34 million years ago, we started getting whales all over the place and you could start to see some real changes in them. And so in this exhibit, we've got three examples of some very cool early whales. Um, one of these whales is a very cool little guy called Papacetus. Papacetus is really kind of a fascinating one because the first time I heard it and said it, I thought there was a little bit of Spanish going on. Hey, Papacetus. But no, it's actually uh, a, a whale from Morocco. And what's cool about it is it had a very big head. And one of the cool things about whale evolution is as you're spending more time in the water, it's harder and harder to lift your head all the way out of the water to breathe. And the earliest whales had uh, nostrils out at the tips of their nose, sort of. And as whales spent more and more time in the water, the nostrils started moving back up towards the top of their heads. And whales today, the nostrils are way back up here in the top of the skull. So Papacetus, you can see the nostrils are moving back a little bit. One of the other cool things is because whales are actually um, evolved from carnivores. They had some very differentiated teeth and you can actually still see even 41 million years ago that they have some different teeth of different shapes. The front teeth are much more uh, conical, kind of like you would see orca teeth today, but they had a bunch of different uh, sizes and shapes of teeth as you move back the jaw. The other thing that is kind of cool about whale evolution and probably one of the more famous things is that you actually get to see the loss of appendages. And Papacetus, we have some hips here, or legs here. Um, and I mentioned that they were even-toed artiodactyls. And you can see with this Papacetus, we've got the legs, you've got the hips, legs, and you can see four toes. Okay, so that makes sense. But these are pretty big legs still. So Papacita still could, you know, even use these legs to paddle a little bit for swimming. But one of the things that's really fascinating 
is we know that these guys were still pretty much totally aquatic. One of the reasons why is because in the hips and Papacetus are still connected to a vertebra. There's actually a connection here still, but it's only to one vertebra. We as humans have five sacral vertebra, so our hips are attached to five different vertebra. And most terrestrial mammals have uh, uh, attachments to a number of vertebra, um, which allows us to be very solid when walking around on land. An attachment to only one vertebra means it was not going to be very good at all at walking on land. It's basically going to be living in the water, but it still had some, some large limbs and feet for swimming, which is kind of cool. But in that same time period, we start seeing these types of whales that are, are coastal, but we see them, they've spread around kind of globally. They made it all the way around to Africa. You can find um, whales all the way around to Peru all the way down to Antarctica. So there's these sort of coastal, you know, near land whales that still have some limbs starting to spread all over the world. But as they become more aquatic and get better uh, at swimming, they start to lose their hind limbs a lot more. And the reason they do that is because they do have tails and eventually the tails start to get flukes on them like whales that you see today. But they didn't always have have flukes, but one of the things is that uh, mammals that quadrupeds on land, right, they, they, have, they run by stretching their front legs forward and kicking their hind legs back and pulling them up underneath them. So the motion is an up and down motion. So whales, when they get into the water, do a lot of their swimming motion is up and down. So as they develop a tail fluke, they can use that up and down motion for their swimming. And when you use a tail, then there's not really a need for back feet, for paddling, in order to be able to swim. So the limbs become much more reduced. And we can come over here to a, another whale that was around in the 41 to 34 million years ago in Morocco, and that's uh, Chrysocetus. And that's this cool little whale here. Um, and this whale you can see has very, very small and reduced hips and legs. And even here now, it's actually reduced from four toes to three. So there's only three toes here, but they're very, very small. And the other interesting thing to note here is the hips are not actually attached to any vertebra. They're just free floating. So this whale would have no chance of being able to hold itself up on land so the rear limbs are basically what we would call vestigial, kind of like our appendix. They're not really functional. So they're being reduced and reduced, but they're still present. And it's kind of interesting to see over the millions of years, uh, actual limbs and legs become vestigial, which is kind of a fascinating process. And yet still at the same time, these guys have teeth where you can see these sort of cusped teeth in the back and more conical teeth up front. And again, the nostril is about halfway back up their nose or their rostrum. So these guys are becoming more adept at swimming. And these guys are now really using their tail only as their propulsion and not using their feet anymore for propulsion like Papacetus could have, could have used their feet for a little bit. So, Whales are now getting sp spread around the world, but each type of whale is still sort of tied a little bit fairly close to the coast. They're not swimming over deep water across the ocean very much. That's about to change. And it really changes as there is a, an archaeocete, ancient, archaeo meaning old, an ancient whale type called Bacillosaurus. And Bacillosaurus really kind of changed things. It's a very cool whale, and it's the large whale in the back, and it also fits around this uh, time period of around 41 to 34 million years ago. Um, and again, you can see for a really large whale, we're talking 40 feet long, you can see that it's got relatively small 
limbs in the back. There's still feet, there's still some hips, but again, like in uh, Chrysocetus, there's no attachment to the vertebra, so they're just free floating. So they're vestigial, they're not being used for anything, but there's a big tail, right? So uh, this is a large whale with a large tail that could swim very well across open waters in the ocean. What that means is that Bacillosaurus got to be much more globally spread around the world. As a matter of fact, Bacill there's one species of Bacillosaurus that is the state fossil of Alabama. So uh, maybe some of you have even heard of this, this whale species because it's here in the United States. A different species is found all over Africa from Morocco down to Egypt. Um, so Bacillosaurus really spread around the world as, as one genus and, and so we started to see whales become really global and which allowed for major shifts in evolution. If we take a look over here um, at the front end of Bacillosaurus, you can see that um, as with whales they keep some front limbs for some uh, fins to be able to help guide themselves when they're swimming and they have really large heads with some very giant teeth, but they still keep teeth that are differentiated. And with all of these whale, early whales that have these differentiated teeth, it means they were actually probably still chewing. So when they would catch things, they would chew on it. Um, and not too long after this, whales started to um, evolve to where they have mostly just conical teeth, if they were carnivores, they would grab things and swallow them whole. They wouldn't be able to chew them. So Bacillosaurus was probably one of the, the last whales that would actually still do some chewing motions and do some chewing of the food that they caught, which is kind of cool and scary. Um, and again, the nostrils have moved further back up on its, on its skull. And the other fascinating thing is as you note from this funky name, it's Bacillosaurus. There's not any other whales that have saurus on the end of their name. They have seat or something like that that tells you it's a whale. Saurus, as we know, means lizard, right? All of our dinosaurs are Tyrannosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Apatosaurus, because they're terrible lizards. Well, when Bacillosaurus was first found, they were finding these big vertebra and people thought, well this long, slender, skinny thing must be a dinosaur or a lizard of some sort, a giant one, so they tagged Saurus at the end of the name. Later on, as people realized this isn't a dinosaur or a lizard or any type of marine reptile, it's actually a mammal and it's a whale, they tried to change the name to get the saurus out of the name. But funny thing about that, with uh, science and naming things, the very first name that any species gets, gets priority and is the one that's official and is kept. So Bacillosaurus was the first name for this fossil. And so it gets priority and any other newer names get dumped. So we have our large giant whale um, from the Eocene that has a lizard ending for its name. So it's really the only whale with a source at the end and it's kind of a, an interesting thing. One of the things we may talk about in our, our next video or in a later video is that when you look at Bacillosaurus and then you go and you look at some actual marine lizards like mosasaurs, really large mosasaurs, and this large whale, if you try to flesh them back out, they kind of look pretty similar. The main difference, again, is that these whales have tails with flukes, and because of the way that, because they're, they're mammals, and they came from quadrupedal running mammals, that their body motion is up and down, whereas lizards because of their side-to-side -side motion being terrestrial lizards, their tails and their swimming motion is side-to-side. -side. 
And so that's really a key difference. But it's really fun and Morocco is a great place to see the early evolution or some of the early evolution of whales where you can see the skulls getting larger, you can still see the differentiated teeth and you can really see the loss or the reduction of the hind limbs in the whales, which is really, really cool. So whales get tails, except there was one particular type that didn't seem to have a whale and seems a little more like seals and sea lions today, which swim with back flippers. Um, and again, almost soon after these whales, we started to get whales that became not only ones that swallowed whole, but you start to get ones that start to figure out how to filter feed. And that's a whole different story. So from our Papacetus and our Chrysocetus and our giant Bacillosaurus, uh, we hope you guys have a great day. I hope you enjoyed this. And whales are really awesomely cool. Um, if you get a chance to go swimming with some, yeah, I'd do it. So for a new way to museum, I'm Reese Barrick. Uh, like us, uh, tell your friends, share with us, and come back again as we come back with another cool story uh, with a few of them from Sahara Sea Monsters. Thanks for joining us in the New Way to Museum with the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. If you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for notifications when we release a new video. Support us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. You can also follow us on all our social media. Links are found in the description. Thanks for watching, and follow your curiosity to new discoveries.